Good morning. This is the Get Up and Go Breakfast Show. My name is Dave Burney. I'm Brent Apperson. Good morning. Good morning to one and all. It's pretty dark out there right now. Boy, we had a nice rain. Yeah, Going yeah. It was ra- raining when I was driving out here. Yeah. Raining when I drove out here. And yeah. It's been nice and slow and steady. 30 hundreds as of uh, 7 o'clock this morning. Notice the airport had 34. Um, so a real general rain, and the radar picture looked like everybody was getting their fair share. So hopefully everybody's enjoying this slow rain. And there's more coming. Looks it like looks it. looks like it. Yeah. So enjoy. That will not detour the livestock auction tonight. It is the Custer County Farm Bureau Covered Arena where they hold the... Uh, 4-H and FFA livestock auction, and so you'll be nice and dry while you're underneath the roof there, and there's been times that uh, they've had to stop it because of lightning and things over the years. I think just a few years ago, they got a gusher like about a half hour before Mm. the auction, and they just wait for it to go through and and, uh, hold the auction, and all the uh, kids uh, queue up and get ready to go. Uh, we've had a lot of fun with the fair this year. Um, by the way, that starts at 7 tonight, and the Exarban Farm Family Awards is our 6.30 ahead of the auction. And a new twist this year. We'll be providing video, live video streaming. Uh, Jeremy and Grant will be providing that for you. And we'll also, of course, have the broadcast on KCNI, 1280 AM, 96.3 FM, as we always have for many, many years. We call them the Marty Days. Um, I remember uh, yeah. Tom Hilkemeyer and yours truly up next to the fence back in the day, uh, the corral. They would let us uh, park ourselves there and cover the auction that way. In recent years, um, we've been able to use the office at the chuck wagon and set up our equipment there. Now we'll be up on the platform that the fair board so nicely created for us to do our videoing and you'll be able to watch it tonight a couple hours of it anyway and uh, we're looking forward to bringing that to you as the grand finale all right now we've had a lot of people post some nice things about casey and i kvbn and also a lot of thank yous out at the fairgrounds we appreciate those very much about the coverage that we provide uh, but the stars of the show are not casey and i kvbn or its staff the stars of the show are the 4-H and FFA kids, number one, who are so much fun to talk to and so polite and wonderful and excited about their projects and uh, what they're doing each year. And the other stars are our sponsors who have made it available to you uh, through their dollars that they spend with us. And this year we did a total of 104 interviews. Wow. <laughs> and uh, that was made possible by all these sponsors. And we started clear back during the fashion show and clothing construction that we started covering before the actual fair got underway and went through the shooting sports. And uh, the uh, to get all those in, it, it uh, makes, uh, how do I want to put it? It lets us get a hold of the kids as they enter some of their projects and we've been doing more of that over the years because uh, for a number of years, we just 
concentrated on the the livestock and and that sort of thing, and that's very very important. Mm. But the kids out there, a lot of them will be showing a steer and entering cookies. I mean, you know, they they have all woodworking projects and sewing projects and all sorts of things that we were able to highlight because of the kids and the sponsors. So thank you for the compliments. Pass those along to the kids when you see them. Certainly pass those along to uh, the sponsors. And we're going to be thanking our sponsors uh, today that have been providing coverage at the Custer County Fair. And we have three pages of them. That's how many we had, and that's what allowed us to do 100. And I think we were scheduled to do 103, and we ended up doing one extra because uh, Cadence went out yesterday and got a couple more. So uh, thanks to everybody. Uh, then we start refocusing, getting a maybe a little short rest, and get ready for the Sandhills Open Road Challenge. Yes, it's coming up. Now, Joan and I were talking last night how thankful we are, and I don't know how we did it, but we did. But it used to be um, when the Thursday night auction was over, then uh, we were at the station after the auction re-rigging our equipment to go the next day oh. to the Sandhills Open Road Challenge, which was the shootout on Friday. So there was no break for a number of years, and you went right from the auction out here, re-rigging the equipment and getting ready to go to the shootout. It's really nice to have that little space in between for everybody uh, to kind of recharge a little bit. So next week, we'll be looking at the Sandhills Open Road Challenge. And we'll also be going to the uh, broadcasters convention. We're going to kind of squeeze that in. The road will be hot because we're... <laughs> We're all going at different times because of Sand Hills Open Road Challenge. We uh, are not spending the entire three days or two days, two and a half days, I guess it is, at Omaha for the Nebraska Broadcasters Convention. We'll be passing one another, going back and forth. Uh, Joan and I are going down on Tuesday, uh, as that will be the Hall of Fame inductees will be honored. And uh, I think I can say it now because uh, Jim Tim sent out a release yesterday. Um, Val Lane, who is our engineer and has been for many years, uh, is being inducted into the Broadcasters Hall of Fame. And uh, he deserves it. So we want to have a representation there. Um, and Val was telling me that... He's planning on including this in his presentation. And I, I, I've only seen... I've only seen I don't know if I've ever seen Val in a suit. So that's I, I told uh, uh, Jim Tim, who heads up the broadcasters, I got to go because I don't think I've ever seen Val in a suit before. Yeah. He's always in a short-sleeved shirt, work shirt, tearing into things and fixing and creating good things for broadcasters. So it's going to be exciting. Val and his wife Sherry uh, reside in Kearney down at Central Electronics, and they've been good friends and... and uh, I think broadcasters in this portion of the country would be in big trouble without Val. So we're going to go down Tuesday night, and then there's an awards banquet for the broadcasters themselves on Wednesday. And uh, our own Grant Winterer has been honored with at least two awards, one of them gold, and I think maybe three, but two for sure. And so he'll be uh, there with some of his family members, and uh, some of our staff will be going down uh, to uh, enjoy that, and they're coming home that night, Wednesday night, because Thursday we'll be at the um, Loop to Loop up at Halsey. So uh, everybody's going to be scrambling, and we're going to scramble and enjoy it at the same time because it's all good things. And uh, so that's kind of our schedule uh, uh, down the road a little bit. So when you go to the broadcasters, are you going to wear a tie? And if so, are you going to wear your tie clip? That's my question. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, I, I, Jim is, Jim Tim is the executive director of the Nebraska Broadcasters, and This I would be an opportunity to market your tie clip. I know, and I would love to do it, <laughs> but I'm afraid Jim would be a little embarrassed. <laughs> So I'm not going to embarrass Jim. Now, out here in this part of the country, we're the type of people who understand if you can take 
something that has multiple uses and use it, oh, yeah. do it. Uh huh. But I don't know if it's that way in Omaha. Mm. And I also have a little problem. Uh, Chris Smith approached me at before the Custer County Fair Parade, uh, and he was talking about litigation on this. Oh, because yeah, I did. I actually was there for a little yeah, bit yeah. of that conversation. Yes, he uses a similar device, if not a very much a like device, mm-hmm. uh, to as a money clip. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. That and works he, for that too. And he was talking about some litigation yeah. uh, uh, towards yours yeah, truly. You're stealing his idea. Yeah, to have it be a tie clip. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to wear. An, uh, got a new suit. Well, new suit coat. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Can you wear that out to the show before you go to the Broadcasters Association? No, I'm saving it for the, I'm saving it for the big shots. Ah. Cuz I don't Can I, I get a picture? Because I I'm the guy that stays home during all this to <laughs> watch watch the house. Yeah, you're watching the house and you don't have to wear a suit coat. That's true. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe Joan will take a picture. Maybe we can get a picture of Joan. Joan, if you're listening, Brent wants a picture. I want to see Dave in his new suit coat. So what kind of coat is it? uh, Kind of a Western-looking jacket? Is it? uh, It's it's, just a regular. Does it have pinstripes? (laughs) No. Oh, okay. (laughs) Just asking. It's kind of a gray color. Joan picked it out, basically. Well, if Joan picked it out, I bet it's sharp. I wouldn't go shopping for a suit coat without Joan. Because she's pretty honest about whether it looks good or not. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> speaking of looking good, Gentleman Jim wanted us to invite everyone out to the fair livestock auction this evening. Uh, of course, Jim Eberly, along mm. with Corey Palmer, and I believe there's another auctioneer there that helps out. Gosh, who would it be? Um, apologize. Mm. I need a sheet on that. Don't have one. But anyway, Gentleman Jim here, he'll be coming up here in a little bit to talk about Dave Davis Farmers National. He wanted us to remind you they'd love to have the uh, bleachers full tonight. Uh, The uh, auction will be a payoff for the hard work of the 4-H and FFA kids, so come out and support them. That is Gentleman Jim's request. I like to call him Handsome Gentleman Jim. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he likes that or not. But uh, we'll just call him Gentleman Jim Eberly. Married to Christie's younger sister. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they'll be there, and uh, he'll be along with other auctioneers running right through. And they don't waste time. They they roll right along, and the auction is snappy. And we'll be airing that on KCNI and showing the auction on live stream on Sandals Express as well. But they'd rather you come out, get some bidding in, help those kids out. It is dark out. Yes, last I checked. Very important event coming up on Sunday. You mentioned it yesterday. This is a fundraiser to benefit Joe Beth Troxel's medical expenses. And this will take place from 9 until noon Sunday at the Callaway Community Center. You can stop in for brunch or take it to go. This is a free will offering and all proceeds will go to aid Joe Beth Troxel. Now, donations can also be left. If you can't make the brunch, you can leave your donations off at the Nebraska State Bank closest to you. And the event again is on Sunday, August 6th from 9 until noon, the fundraiser brunch for Joe Beth Troxel at the Callaway Community Center. So either go or drop off a donation because Joe Beth needs our help. Just uh, moving some papers. Got to catch up here. Did you ever get to? No, the... I I didn't. Too I did busy, not. Wasn't I it? did not read the Prairie Pioneer Center menu. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Today they're having roast beef, mashed potatoes and gravy, mixed veggies, dessert, yeah, and dinner roll. I was kind of. You know how sometimes you read and your mind goes somewhere else. Oh man, all the time. Yes. I, the potato part reminded me of yesterday's. Uh, the Clover Kids Bucket Calf Parade. Oh, you had one that was named Potato. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a good name for a calf. I hate that when that happens when, when, for us, uh, when you're reading the weather. You ever Have you ever recorded the weather forecast and you're reading along and all of a sudden 
you forget what day you were reading. Oh, exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. That's horrible. Yeah. That's what the embarrassing <laughs> part is when people say, hey, Dave, what's the weather going to do today? I go, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know. I've, I've I read been, it. Read, been reading it all day, but I, I'm not sure. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, today, the, at, out at the fairgrounds, they're not completely done yet before the auction, by the way. They'll be uh, releasing the exhibits uh, from 8 a.m. until noon today. And at 9.30, they'll have the 4-H and FFA Livestock Judging Contest. And at 11.30, they'll have the Elite Showmanship Contest. So they're still going out there. They're not completely done uh, with the uh, events there. And then at 6.30, the Exarban Farm Family Awards at the uh, Custer County Farm Bureau Show Ring. And then uh, at 7 o'clock, the 4-H and FFA Livestock Sale gets underway. All right, it's National Watermelon Day. Hey, I can get into that. Watermelon is technically a berry. Oh. Did you know that? Mm, can't say I did. All right. Try putting it on a muffin. See how that works for oh, you. Yeah, anyway, huh. uh, the Guinness per, uh, Book of World Records says the heaviest one ever weighed was 262 pounds. <whistles> and there's a good reason why they call it watermelon, because scientists say it's about 92% water. And maybe about 6% seeds if you're still getting the ones with seeds in them. Hmm. You can get the seedless nowadays. I like the seeds. I don't like the little white ones. They get kind of, I don't know, they're kind of nauseating. But big old black seeds, fun to spit out. Yeah. Uh, This is the start of the Persidus meteor meteor shower peak. That starts tonight. Astronomy nerds and uh, romantics start craning their necks to get a look at the Persidus meteor shower. Supposed to be the best show of the year, and you can see between 50 and 80 of them an hour if you have a clear sky. Uh, It'll peak August 13th, so it's going to go on for a while. So if you can't get romantic tonight, you've got a few days left. There you go. Go out there with your sweetheart and, oh, oh, look at the stars. Make a wish. Yeah. Speaking of stars, Tom Brady, 46 today. Oh. The GOAT. Happy birthday, Tom. Seven Super Bowl rings. Doesn't really need any gifts, probably. Uh, Martha Stewart, just getting done with her Sports Illustrated swimsuit uh, modeling. What? Yeah, she was. Did I know that? I think we talked about it before, yeah. She posed for Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. Yeah. Oh, my. At age 82. Yeah, she's also been uh, doing uh, some uh, potluck dinner parties with Snoop Dogg. Yeah, I don't know what they're putting in. <laughs> Never mind. A no, they're has. good. They're good friends. Yeah, they, they have. They they've uh, they struck up a friendship. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he seems yeah. like a likable guy. He does. Yeah. yeah. James Hetfield, Grammy-winning lead singer and guitarist for Metallica. My wife calls him the uh, lion. She says he looks like the lion in. The Wizard of Oz. Nah. Uh, Martin Sheen, great actor. Oh, yeah. 83 today. Also the dad of Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez. Uh, 83. Boy, well, he's been acting for a long time. When he was younger, I just, man, I anything he was in, I'd catch. He, mm. My favorite was when he was, he drove a hot rod into town and was kind of mysterious from oh, yeah. cruising around town on a hot rod. Yeah, he had a little something he wanted to take care of. So. Oh. Yeah, somebody that had done wrong. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, those are some of the things that are happening. Do we have anything else this half hour that I should be taking care of, Brent? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, We'll have the Farmers National Company report coming up right before the top of the hour. But business-wise, I think that's all we have to get done before 8. All right. Then it really picks up because the Broken Bow Chamber is coming into the studio to talk about the ladies' steak fry, probably the men's too. Uh, we'll be going out to the fairgrounds. I'll be going out one more time, well, well, one more time or two more times, one more time to visit with uh, the folks. Uh, normally they come in here to the studio uh, representing the Custer County Ag Society. I think M- Michelle's going to meet me uh, west of the uh, arena. We're going to kind of probably talk about the fair and maybe thank some people. That'll be live from the fairgrounds. Uh, we also have on our list uh, Pearson Physical Therapy, uh, Subway and Universal Insurance, and also the Garden Center. 
Now, if we get everybody in here today, it's going to be kind of power packed. Yeah. So, and, and you're going to be running the controls after I leave. So, go for it, man. All right, I will attempt to do my best. Oh, you'll do fine. You did really good during the fair. Uh, worked really well. You were getting us on live when you could, and worked really nicely. All right. Three pages. Let's oh, wow. thank let's thank our Custer County Fair interview sponsors, which include the Quilting Shack, Mount Custer's Truck Sales, Mead Lumber, Custer Public Power District, CarQuest Auto Parts, Full Circle Irrigation and Broken Bow and Litchfield, RT Ace Hardware, Taylor Heating and Cooling, Custer Federal State Bank, Sergeant Irrigation, Trotters Incorporated, The Grocery Cart, Dana F. Cole, Power Solutions, Ferreter Auto Parts, Maple Park Dental, Cobblestone Inn & Suites, Myers Iron and Salvage, Agra Affiliates, Bruning Bank, Lashley Land and Callaway District Hospital along with the Arnold and Callaway Medical Clinics, and the South Loop Community Pharmacy also sponsoring along with Agra Best Feeds in Callaway, Fixed Right Auto here in Broken Bow, Central Nebraska Electric, Backbone of Healthcare, Custer County Feeders at Oconto, uh, Custer Electric and Irrigation, Costas Styling Salon, the Custer County Ag Society, Insurance of the Heartland, Nebraska Pasture Door, Gateway Motors, Ansley Lumber and Supply, Brad White Equipment, A to Z Lawn Pro, Hillary Williams Photography, BD in Broken Bow, Pearson's Physical Therapy, Foo Bar and Grill in Selmo, Nebraska State Bank, Frontier Family Pharmacy, Consolidated Companies, uh, Adams Land and Cattle, Healing Hearts and Families, Moline Seed and Fence, Eggleston Oil, A1 Auto Repair, Mills Hardware in Arnold also, uh, WinQuest Incorporated, thank you guys, Sargent Corner Market, Mr. Rudy's Mercantile and more, American Family Insurance, Justin Thompson, the Tumbleweed Cafe, and Bristol Sprinklers and Landscaping, all making our interviews available to you on the radio. And we have a few left to go this morning on the breakfast show. Good. So we're going to squeeze that in as well. As a matter of fact, let's play the game, and then we'll have an interview for you. All right. Sounds good. Uh, we've been asking questions about sandwiches because August is Sandwich Month. This American sandwich is messy but good. Which of these sandwiches traditionally consists of ground beef, sweetened tomato sauce, and onions on a hamburger bun? Your choices are the messy sandwich, the sloppy joe, the <clears throat> sloppy pork, or the messy joe. Those are your choices. This American sandwich is messy but good. Which of these sandwiches traditionally consists of ground beef, sweetened tomato sauce, and onions on a hamburger bun? Is it the messy sandwich, the sloppy joe, the sloppy pork, or the messy joe? If you know, call us at 872-2801. Bow Bootery and Broken Bow is closing our doors forever. Every item in the store is on sale and price to sell. Today, get 20% off the original price of all Western boots, 20% off all Western hats, and 20% off all adult and children's athletic footwear. Also get 35% off the original price of all Bear Paws outdoor footwear and half off all overshoes. At these prices, everything is moving fast. We're also selling our store fixtures and equipment, including office furniture and equipment, cash counter, and storage shelves. Then while you're there, register to win one of our 10 fantastic prizes, including a Samsung 65-inch smart TV and 5.3-quart GE kitchen mixer. That's our Bow Bootery store closing sale at 440 South 8th Avenue in Broken Bow. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Take advantage of these deals before we close our doors forever. Charlene is on the line. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I know from the history books that you were a longtime cook at the Anselmo Myrna School, so I'm guessing you're going to know the answer to this question, Charlene, but here's Brent uh, with the question. 
Okay, Charlene, this American sandwich is messy but good. Which of these sandwiches traditionally consists of ground beef, sweetened tomato sauce, and onions on a hamburger bun? Is it the messy sandwich, the sloppy joe, the sloppy pork, or the messy joe? Sloppy joe. Yes, of course, it's the sloppy joe. And because you've answered correctly, we are going to give you a certificate for a sandwich. A free six-inch sub at Subway in Broken Bow is your prize today, so come on out and see us when you can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlene. 7.55, we'll take a quick time out. Then we'll have the Dave Davis Report, Farmer National. And again, Jim Eberly invites everyone out to the fair, to the livestock auction tonight, to um, auction off the hard work of the 4-H and FFA kids. Come out and support them. We'll take this time out, and uh, we're going to move the first uh, interview to right after uh, the weather and news at 8. Keep it right here. When you're battling cold or allergy symptoms, you want products you can depend on. They have them at Varney Health Mart. Shop their complete section of nasal sprays and various amounts of sprays. On sale now to start your relief from allergies. When that cold has you plugged up, nasal decongestion PE is on sale at $2.99. For the kids, children's cold and cough multi-symptom is $4.99. Barney Health Mart, downtown Broken Bow. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and care. Good soil starts with good seed. Aero Seed is big on performance and believe that clean quality seed simply performs better. Soil builder cover crop mixes from Aero Seed were developed to improve soil health and provide maximum benefits to the next planted crop. Cover crops planted after wheat, corn, or soybean harvest not only increase nitrogen supplies in your soil, but also reduce erosion, conserve soil moisture, reduce compaction, and suppress weeds. These benefits to your soil also benefit your bottom line. Learn more about soil builder cover crop mixes and how they can work for you by visiting aeroseed.com or your local aeroseed dealer. Good morning. Good morning. You're listening to the Get Up and Go Breakfast Show with Dave and Brent. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is Jim and Kathy Everly reporting for Dave Davis Auction Service and Farmers National Company. To start with, we do have a listing at 618 Hillcrest Drive. It's a ranch-style home in a subdivision. It's a very nice home with open floor plan. The living room has a large picture window. Breakfast bar separates the kitchen and the dining area. Appliances are included. The dining area has patio doors leading out to the backyard. Main floor also has three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and laundry room. Master bedroom has a master bath with double sinks and a walk-in closet. The lower level is finished with a large, nice family room and two bedrooms and third bathroom. Lots of recent upgrades in this home. Two by six exterior walls and hardy plank siding. It's an all-electric home with a heat pump. Nice yard with underground sprinklers and a deck in the back. That's located at 618 Hillcrest Drive. Also in Broken Bow at 311 South 13th Avenue, we have a home listed. Large eat-in kitchen with gas range and built-in microwave. Kitchen appliances are staying with the home. The living room has a picture window. There's two bedrooms and a full bathroom on the main level. Laundry located on the back porch. Second floor has two more bedrooms with walk-in closets. The lower level has a half bathroom, possible fifth bedroom, and lots of storage. Some newer windows. Shingles new in 2017. Water heater new in 2020. There's a 19 by 11 shed with window air conditioner that would make a perfect she shed, man cave, or even just great storage. Backyard has privacy fence, covered patio in the back, oversized single car garage that is heated, has a workshop area. That is at 311 South 13th Avenue. And then on Saturday, August 19th, we are having a, an auction for Robert L. Osbald, and it's a household collectible and vehicle and shop equipment. And Jim's going to tell you about that. But we are also selling the real estate. The house auction will be at 1. And the address is 44305 Buckeye Road, Broken Bow. It's a modular home with three bedrooms and two bathrooms. This home is a fixer-upper with many possibilities. It does sit on 3.32 plus or minus acres. And I'm going to let Jim tell you about the auction part of it. Again, on August 19th at 9 o'clock, we will start with the household and collectible auction. There's some vehicles on there and a boat, uh, some shop equipment, but lots and lots of antiques and uh, miscellaneous items like collectibles and stuff like that. There is a 1916 TNL Jones and Company crock pitcher, a lot of Red Wing uh, items, 
a lot of depression glass, a lot of Jack and Jill depression glass. Also, McCoy wishing wells. You've got all kinds of hole pieces, uh, Roseville, you name it. There is tons and tons of glassware on this sale. Also, there'll be some horse collars and hames. you got a Sky Rover bicycle, uh, six cast iron Buckeye seats. Uh, this was the old Buckeye store originally. Down there is kind of where it's located. There's a Chevy bo pickup box trailer with a topper. you got an International Cub tractor with blade. you got a 13-foot dual axle trailer. You got a little 1993 Chevy White Cavalier, a 1987 Chevy Sports Van. You got a 79 two-door Lincoln Continental. You got a 1994 Layton fifth wheel camper. Uh, also the boat, uh, I know he did find a title for it. He's bringing it into the office. I do not have a date on it. Uh, some ended decor, jewelry, uh, cigar boxes, cowboy prints, a Hereford Bull, uh, there's a cast iron elephant banks, a lot of cast iron banks that we found. Uh, also, there is a cast iron uh, Donald Duck, uh, an old one. And anyway, it will, it'll go on and on as far as the listing. The sale bill does not do justice to what the items are on this auction. A lot of uh, tables also, uh, that type of stuff. Anyway, again, on August 19th, 2023, 9 o'clock down at the Buckeye original store at 9 o'clock again. Uh, we'll talk to you next week, give you a little more information on the items, and good to talk to you, and we'll see you next week. You are listening to the Get Up and Go Breakfast Show. Go, go, go! On KCNI, KBBN, Broken Bow, Nebraska. CBS News Brief. Former President Trump flies to Washington, D.C. today to answer to new federal charges of trying to change the 2020 election results. CBS's Scott McFarland. The hearing could take just minutes. We expect the former president to plead not guilty and potentially hear some release restrictions from the magistrate judge, potentially on his conversations with witnesses and travel. Metal barriers surround the courthouse. Police say there may be more victims. After a man kidnapped a woman in Seattle and locked her in a cinder block cell in his garage in Oregon, she she escaped. The victim's focus, actions, and her will to survive triggered a law enforcement response that may have actually saved many other women from a similar nightmare. For the first time, Lizzo is responding to allegations from some of her former dancers. In an Instagram post, the musician calls stories of fat shaming and sexual harassment false and sensationalized. Deborah Rodriguez, CBS News. In Nebraska news, it's been four years since a Trenton woman went missing with no signs of her whereabouts. The FBI Omaha field office is now offering a $10,000 reward to find Sunny Shremek, and her family spoke out about it Tuesday evening. According to law enforcement, Sunny left Trenton with a man on an alleged trip to Omaha in April of 2019 and has not been heard of since. Although it's been a long, painful journey, the family does not want the public to forget Sonny. Authorities said Sonny has a tattoo of a feather on her left shoulder and the words fly and a tattoo on her right ankle of a tribal son in red ink. Anyone with information is asked to contact the FBI Omaha Division at 402-493-8688. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles, here's Eddie Garcia. The Major League Baseball games of note, the Cubs scored 20 runs against the Reds on Tuesday. They scored 16 runs against Cincinnati on Wednesday in a 16-6 victory. But Cincinnati still has a half-game lead on Milwaukee for first in the NL Central. As the Brewers couldn't take advantage, they lost the Nationals 3-2. 12 innings for the Marlins doing a wild win over the Phillies. 9-8 to eight was the final. Diamondbacks lose to the Giants 4-2. to two. So Milwaukee and Miami are tied for the final wild card spot in the National League. Arizona is one game back. Rangers roll over the White Sox 11-1. to one. Texas still holding on to a half-game lead on Houston for first in the AL West. The Astros wrapped up the three-game series sweep over the Guardians with a 3-2 win for Cleveland. They're still two back of Minnesota in the AL Central race. The Twins lost the Cardinals 7-3. Blue Jays beat the Orioles 4-1. to one. Toronto has that final wild card spot in the American League. Rays lose to the Yankees 7-3. Baltimore still a game and a half up on Tampa Bay for first in the AL East. Here's your weather allergy forecast. Partly sunny for today. A few showers and storms are possible in the area at times. Highs top out near 85 degrees. 
Winds northeasterly 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy. Showers and storms likely. Lows drop to 63. Winds turn to the north-northwest 5 to 10. And then Friday, partial sunshine is possible at times. Showers stay likely. Storms still possible and highs approach 81. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Phil Jensko. Lashley Land and Recreational Brokers is proud to be servicing the Custer County area. And currently, land is moving at a high rate of speed. So if you are considering selling your land, now is the time. Or get an opinion of what your land might be worth. Call me, John Farley, at 308-530-7854. Or check me out at LashleyLand.com. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. Four out of five employers who post a job in ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. And even 70 outside under a cloudy sky, and uh, Andrew is here. Uh, is it still raining outside? It is still raining, yes. Okay, good. Still raining, <laughs> according to Andrew, with a southeast breeze at 5 miles per hour. Barometric pressure is at 30.07 and continuing to rise. Humidity at 96%. Our high yesterday, 88. Overnight low of 71, although we're at 70 right now. 30 hundredths precipitation measured at 7 o'clock this morning and still raining. We have a total of 32 hundredths uh, when we measured uh, for the month. But a nice rain and still coming. 70 and cloudy. A real quick touch with the Custer County Fair. And we'll have that quick interview for you. And then we're going to talk about physical therapy, which maybe is a good idea right now. <laughs> Stay tuned. You're listening to Central Nebraska's news source, KCNI, KBBN Radio, Broken Bow, Nebraska. Up next, we bring you a report from the Custer County Fair 2023, brought to you by Moline Seed and Fence. And I have Kinsey Russell with me. Kinsey, how are you? Good. How Good. are you? I, I'm feeling a little short right now. You're up on top of horse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's good to see you up there, though. How's the fair going? Good. 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 What are you getting ready to do next? Ranch pleasure. Rand's Pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's right. basically Western Pleasure, just there's extends. Okay. Now, for us who aren't very well versed in this, uh, what, do, what do they ask you to do? Um, you have a walk, you have a trot, there's an extended trot, there's a lope, and an extended lope. And then they're going to ask you to stop. You go in and you line up with the judge, and then they'll have you back up, and then they place you. Okay. You seem pretty relaxed about it. I'm ready for it. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good. All right, for those of the listeners out there who don't know uh, a little bit about you, um, your uh, family, T talk about your family a little bit. I have an older brother who is right by me. He is not competing because he has a concussion. Oh, man. Yeah. He, had a, he had a car wreck his freshman year. Um, my parents are in the stands. They're, they're ready for this. This is a... Uh, we didn't get a lot of practice this year because I just had an ankle surgery, so I wasn't able to ride a lot, but I'm ready for it. Here you are. So good luck. A uh, little bit about school. What, uh, what uh, grade will you be in this coming fall? I'll be in eighth grade. Eighth grade here in town in Broken Bow? In, at Anselmo Myrna. Anselmo Myrna. All right. Well, thanks for talking to us. Good luck. Thank you. All right. This report has been brought to you by Moline Seed and Fence. All right, Andrew is here from Pearson's Physical Therapy. Summer is running by, Andrew. We're we're into August now. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we got school right around the corner, and uh, that's what I was just mentioning to Brent. We got sports coming up, so we start 
thinking about uh, you know student evaluations, uh, athlete evaluations, and um, you know injuries start popping up. Uh, even though a lot of times these kids are super active and doing training and all that over the summer, it's still a big ramp up. And anytime you get transitions like that, where um, you're going from this amount of activity to that amount of t- activity every day, uh, especially some of these young kids who just haven't developed that much yet. Um, it's kind of a recipe for uh, injuries to happen. And so that's uh, always comes up when school starts is, you know, what do we do if something happens? You know, you've got probably two main types of injuries. You've got the uh, the incidental injury, which is, you know, something happened, a sprained ankle or somebody ran into me and felt something happen and mm-hmm. you have kind of an ouch moment. And so helping to kind of figure that out, uh, we do that a lot. Um, you know, the biggest thing I think with those is is what do we do, right? And the the athlete wants to know, the parents want to know, the coaches want to know, you know, is this is this going to be they're out for a couple of days, they're out for a month, they're out for six months, you know, and do we need to go see an orthopedic specialist, all these kind of things, uh, do we need x-rays? And so just having worked with athletes for years and years, that that whole process of working through that is, is um, you know, it's something that I think the more you work those cases, the more you kind of see where you're going to go with them and you can give people some insight. You know, here's what we're going to do right now. And maybe in a couple of days or in a week, we'll know a lot better. And it might you might be right back at it, you know, mm-hmm. or, hey, this is looking a little bit like, you know, there might be something more involved and we need to get get it checked out and we need to be careful. And so, you know, that's always a big concern, especially with uh, with parents and kids who they're they're all geared up to play this sport and they're all excited and then all of a sudden this happens. And mm. it's unfortunate, but if we can help with that process, you know, and so sometimes those cases come to us early and sometimes we see them down the road after they've already been uh, developing for a while. Um so that's, that's a big thing. If anybody has questions, uh, specifically up at uh, Anselmo Myrna, uh, since that's kind of uh, a community that I've uh, been with more so, but, but not, not only. Um, but we have uh, Bree Powers is a new uh, staff, new on our staff at, a, at AM. And um, she is an athletic trainer who is going to help cover Anselmo Myrna much the way that uh, Sarah Cooksley was. Mm. Um, and so that's exciting. And so, you know, she's starting to get her feet wet with working with the kids up there. They're doing a lot of their pre-concussion uh, baseline testing, that kind of stuff. So she's getting to know the crowd up there. And um, so for just for the Anselmo Myrna crowd up there, um, she's somebody you guys can go to and send your kids to. And I'll still be in the mix up there too. Uh, periodically to kind of answer questions and help guidance with that. But um, so, yeah, that's exciting. Um, On the other end of things you've got, other than incidental injuries, you've got things that just suddenly I have pain here and I don't know why. And, um, you know, again, in this situation with a young athlete, it can be as simple as, you know, I wasn't that active over the winter, over the summer and all of a sudden I'm running a lot every day and, you know, you're getting blasted every day and you're tired. And then those are kind of situations where you're going to get like tendonitis and uh, sometimes shin splints. And I mean, depends a little bit on the person and what's going on. Um, you know, volleyball, you might start to have like shoulder stuff with, with that overhead motion repetitively and, and that kind of thing. Um, so those are, those are cases that, they can be simple, and it could just be, hey, we just need to rest a few days and, and uh, get out of that that pressure cooker of every single day, blasting away at those tissues. Um, and sometimes it might be the tip of the iceberg, unfortunately, where, right. you're, where you're like, well, you got a list going on and that going on, and we start to look at you know, deficiencies in strength and, and you know, posture and, and how well you're moving. And so that, that sometimes can be peeling back the layers of the onion, and, and especially for a young athlete who – you know, might have a fairly good three, four, five years left in their in their their sports career. You want to start to look at those things early and figure out well, what do we what do we need to do to make sure this isn't just a a recurrent problem um, year after year. So those are things that you know we we go through and see a lot at the clinic. Um, you know, anybody who wants to uh, come and. Uh, do sort of a screening and consult that thing. We used to do, you know, the, uh, or over the years we've done the stride clinics. Right. Um, and so what we decided this month with August is just cause everybody's got stuff going on on the weekends and, you know, last minute this and trips and, you know, going and getting school, school supplies. So, uh, we're just going to say, Hey, if you want to come in do a stride clinic or do some sort of like a, just a individual assessment, 
um, to just call the clinic and we'll just find a time for you to do that. And then we can kind of break it down and, and look at what needs to be looked at, whether that's, you know, just the nothing's hurting, but we want to look at how good my running stride is or um, do a quick screening. I've got a young athlete, maybe a junior hire, and we want to see what's strong, what's weak, what's what do we need to worry about? Sometimes it's, you know, hey, I know we've got a lot of flat footedness in our family and what kind of shoes do you think our kids should be in? So we get all, all sorts of questions like that. So it was yesterday we were covering the fair and that was uh, stocker feeder calf time and uh, there was a calf uh, that put on quite a rodeo show. Oh. And unfortunately, <laughs> the young man, uh, he handled the calf really well but I noticed uh, they, he kind of got between the corral and the calf a couple oh. of times. And I kind of noticed he was gimping a little bit afterwards. And, uh, you know, you can get those injuries, and he's going to play football. So there's an example of maybe you want to have that looked at before you s- st- start your training for yeah. football, which is probably very close to being underway. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so there's th- things that can happen outside of the sport before the sport. Um, and then, of course, uh, the fall always brings uh, working the calves and, and branding and that and all that sort of thing anyway. So yeah. even uh, older athletes, the older cowboys and cowgirls, might want to come and see you after they feel something pulled there. That's right. Yeah, I mean, you 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 definitely see a lot of these extracurriculars around here that <laughs> that uh, are just normal day to day things for a lot of people around here. Right. It's, it's interesting the uh, all the stories you hear of how somebody ended up in front of me. Uh, and so I bet. So uh, so yeah, um, you know, we we talk about the the athletes, um, you know, and the the sort of the standard sprains and overuse things. But yeah, sometimes it's a mixture. Sometimes it's sort of a, a concoction of what's yeah. what's going on and hey, there's this and there's that. And, and I mean, from a therapy standpoint, it's kind of fun to sort of like try to get your detective hat on and figure <laughs> out what's, what's had it led to why they're having trouble and, and what you can or can't do kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, um, I think, uh, I think that whole thing of if it's hanging around and you're concerned about it, yeah, it doesn't hurt to get someone to take a look at it yeah. and, and give you a little bit of consultation about what you should try to do with it and how you should manage it. Yeah. So. And there's a chance it might be a, a, a simple solution and exercise that can yeah. al- alleviate that over a little period of time. Yeah. So. I think, you know, I think the thing is, it is, you know, after years and years of doing this, it's, it's, Sometimes there isn't any particular one trick or anything like that. You know, you always kind of hope, well, is there, is there some move or something like that you can do just a, some treatment and all of a sudden I'm good. And, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I really wish we, we could do that sometimes. And, and sometimes it, if you do, though, if you manage it well from the beginning – uh, and catch a lot of those key points and you follow sort of the recommended steps, you can really speed along that process, that healing process. And that's what we talk about a lot with athletes or with uh, patients in general is that really we're trying to get this process to your body to sort of ramp up and take care of it as quick as possible. Uh, I mean, there's a few things that, that we do that, you know, help to make that happen quicker um, but sometimes it's just a, a management and say okay well just make sure if you got this and this and this let's let's adjust things so that for at least a few days you're doing this instead whatever what it depends on the situation but, right. but yeah right well um, it is that time of year where some things probably have happened along the way and certainly with athletes they want to be 100 percent or close to it when they when they get going here so and they can stop in and see you and and uh, check things out. Yep, yep. And so, like I said, we can do we can do the stride stuff and and try to get your running as good as possible. You know, we've said this over before that uh, you know most sports around here, uh, running is kind of the the base movement, the base activity. If you can get that going pretty good, it helps a lot. Uh, and it also just. Pretty much as soon as I get somebody up on a treadmill and I start looking at how they move, I can start to spot things over the years now that, that you can see where people are going to maybe have trouble um, and start to give people ideas. And, and again, they might not even have any pain issues at all, but you might say, well, you know, you've got a, you've got a 14-year-old, 15-year-old here that's that's got this and this. Is, we, we probably want to watch for this. This might be the thing that's going to arise over the next couple of years kind of a thing. So, And then on the other end of the spectrum, you know, it doesn't have to be 
athletes, if you're just somebody out there who uh, you're like, well, I don't want to jump up on a treadmill and run in front of anybody, we get <laughs> we get that, and I understand it. Sure. But I've got this and this going on, or my feet are bugging me. Um, you know, for sure, if you want to come in, and we can we can just figure out what uh, what needs to be done. So okay, all right. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, no Appreciate problem. It. It's good to see you. Good to see you. All right, we'll take a time out with these words on The Breakfast Show. Bow Bootery and Broken Bow is closing our doors forever. Every item in the store is on sale and price to sell. Today, get 20% off the original price of all Western boots, 20% off all Western hats, and 20% off all adult and children's athletic footwear. Also, get 35% off the original price of all Bear Paws outdoor footwear and half off all overshoes. At these prices, everything is moving fast. We're also selling our store fixtures and equipment, including office furniture and equipment, cash counter, and storage shelves. Then while you're there, register to win one of our 10 fantastic prizes, including a Samsung 65-inch smart TV and 5.3-quart GE kitchen mixer. That's our Bow Bootery store closing sale at 440 South 8th Avenue in Broken Bow, Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Take advantage of these deals before we close our doors forever. Gary Superfoods and Broken Bow. Save with them today. This week, pick up assorted pork chops at $1.99 a pound or fresh boneless skinless chicken breast in family packs at $1.99 a pound. Summertime is a great time to enjoy whole seedless watermelon, $3.99 each, or Northwest Grown Sweet Cherries at $1.99 a pound. Don't forget to take advantage of Gary's Superfoods rewards each week and every Monday through Friday from open until 1, senior citizens receive a discount. Gary's Superfoods, South B Street in Broken Bow. Wake up to the best. I never miss a morning. You're listening to The Breakfast Show. Dave Bernie reporting from the Custer County Fair 2023. This report brought to you by Central Nebraska Electric. And I have Lily Jonas with me. Lily, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks for taking time to talk to me. I know you're getting ready to uh, go into the ring. Yep. What are you going to be competing in? In a few classes, I'll be competing in ranch riding. Okay. Now, Lily, we've been covering you for a long time, and I'm almost afraid to <laughs> ask this question because time goes so quick. Um, how much 4-H do you have left? I This will be my second to last year. Okay. So I'll be able to show next year, and then I've aged out. So. Okay. So that puts you as a ju junior this Extend year? I'll be a senior this year. You'll be a year. senior. Yep. Okay. And you'll go to school here in Broken Bow? Yep. All yep. right. All right. Boy, how's how's the ride been with 4-H? What do you like about it? Um, It brings a lot of, like, confidence and you have to remember patterns and just a lot of different mindset things that you have to overcome and do yeah so. yeah now you have a family that supported you all along the way and a, and a sister who also is involved that certainly probably helped yes most definitely most definitely it's it's not as fun showing by myself without my sister because we're each other's competitors basically but <laughs> we'll still do it so yeah well good luck thanks for talking to us and the school year is coming up what do you plan on doing for extra curricular activities well i'll have volleyball this fall and i'm also a cheerleader and then student council and the and other hello. other activities that i can fit into my and schedule hello. so you're as busy as your mom and dad I think. <laughs> no kidding or maybe busier yeah no kidding <laughs> well lily thanks for talking to us thank you and good luck so good to see you hope we get to talk to you next year yes thank you all right this report brought to you by central nebraska electric all right, thank you, Dave, and I think we have another one or two of those to play for you as we go through the show here this morning as we kind of wrap up our coverage of the Custer County Fair today. In fact, Dave is headed back out to the fairgrounds. Plan is to visit with Michelle Nelson and the Custer County Ag Society, and uh, I'm sure the topic will be the Custer County Fair, and that will be coming up later in the show. Here in the studio, though, we're joined by Nate Bell, Universal Insurance Agency. Hello, sir. Good morning. How are we doing? Good. How are you? Good. Yeah. Been a good, been a good week for you. It has been wet. <laughs> I, uh, isn't it crazy uh, when you start to think about the lack of rain in months like April and even into May where we expect rain? Right. And now here we are, July, 
here at the station was actually approaching four inches for the month. And here we are. The It's it's rained every day in August I know. to start the month. What's going on? I don't know. It's uh, I don't think anybody's going to complain too much. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, and the fair is usually super hot, but, it, you, know, I, I, you know, trading off for a little bit of muddy fair is probably a... Yeah. I'm sure that no one's complaining. They don't have to go out and check their pivots while their kids are at the fair this week, so that's yeah. good. Uh, over, let's see, all my days run together, Nate, but I want to say <laughs> it was, uh, was it this past weekend or was it the weekend before that? Where the we, windstorm? Yes, where we had some... Uh, Saturday, I think. Yeah, Saturday. I think it was Saturday, Saturday night Saturday, or Friday night and Saturday morning yeah, or Saturday something like Saturday morning that. early. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, uh, I'm sure many have uh, seen some of the damage, especially around the Callaway area yeah. with the extreme straight winds that did a lot of damage. Uh, did you get called out to go sure. look at some of that? And uh, if so, uh, what did you see? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was some good winds, straight line winds. Like you said, I think they had, what, 110, I think is what I heard, or yeah. 100, um, saw a lot of damage. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, we've a few roofs were damaged there, uh, taken off, and uh, I've talked to a few of our insureds, and they've had a, a little bit of damage there. But for the most part, it sounds like it was a lot of trees that fell, um, uprooted, uh, and uh, you know, got lu- got luckier than got got lucky, I guess, if you sure. will. It could have been yeah. a lot, lot worse. Mm-hmm. So I don't think there was any hail involved, which was good. Uh, you know, 100 mile an hour winds with hail would have been. <laughs> Oh man, I can't even imagine. Yeah, Uh, but you know, Callaway's uh, Callaway's resilient, and uh, they'll get after it again. And uh, two years in a row, though, it's just uh, I feel bad out there. It's they they need a break. They do. Yes, (laughs) that that is for sure. I'm sure they'll say that too. Yeah, but uh, they are resilient. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, what about the summer as a whole, Nate? I mean, I, I know that you guys cover some areas beyond let's say custer county yeah Um, as a whole has it been maybe a little less or has it been a little bit more than what you i haven't seen the numbers yet you know it seems like uh it seems like there's a storm every week uh somewhere that's severe uh you know i think it's been pretty spotty so i don't think it's hit major major cities i know omaha area got some pretty good size hail like bellevue and Plattsmouth and uh, Fremont, kind of that, and Gretna, kind of that area. I think I got hit last week as well. Um, it may be in the same storm now that I think about it. Uh, but I, you know, I haven't seen the numbers. I, I, I know that there's still a lot of claims getting turned in and there's still a lot of severe weather. It doesn't seem like we've had those like large events. It's just these little spotty yeah. ones, kind of like what happened with Callaway and here and there. And, um, I don't think it's tra- it's not trending in a great direction. Uh, I, I I think we're still you know we've talked about it several times on here that we've just seen a lot of weather and um, Nebraska has been fortunate it hasn't got the South tornado issues but mm-hmm. um, hail has been uh, been there. I you know we've seen pictures of large hail like softball size hail and mm-hmm. I talked to some of my friends in those areas and they said yeah but that'd be like one stone that was like that and the rest yeah. of them were all small. And so it wasn't, uh, you know, complete wipeouts. But, you know, you drive by, I think it's York area, and the corn is shelled mm. uh, So in, in places. So it's it's still happening, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, listen, that, that's where insurance comes Absolutely. into play because you never know what Mother Nature is going to do. Yep. And I'm guessing the last thing a person wants is to think I'm covered, and then you have a weather event hit, and you find out that you're not as covered as you thought you were, and that's where these reviews and everything really come into play, don't they? Yeah, and we've you know we've got a great staff now. We're all full full up, and uh, they're hitting it hard with we're all, we're hitting them hard with uh, you know emails, phone calls, and letters. Get in and take a look and see where your stuff's at. Make sure that those values are where they need to be. Um, make sure you understand where your deductibles are at because companies are changing that stuff all over hmm. the place. So you're not surprised, you know, that your deductible has increased or changed or uh, they've changed to a different, you know, different coverage on something. Uh, those things are happening all the time, and they're mailing those things out. But if you're like me, uh, I'm not reading insurance documents that, <laughs> that closely. Yeah. And, and we totally get it, but it is it is part of your responsibility to understand that stuff. And if you're sure. worried about what has been sent to you and you didn't understand it, that's why we're there is to come in and talk to us. 
uh, or give us a call instead of appointment, whatever it may be. Um, because there is the industry is really in flux right now, and the companies are changing how they have covered things than, than they've, they've done in the past. So while the wind and hail is still covered, because it's one of the primary things that all insurance covers, how that deductible plays out and how much coverage you have can change. So it's mm-hmm. definitely worth having a conversation about it. So. Um, we're in the point of the year now where uh, kids are thinking about going back to school, back to college. Yep. And so I'm assuming the vehicle that they're driving to college, you want to make sure that it's insured properly. Yep. What a, I don't know if we've ever talked about this. I don't know if there's any kind of uh, plan or coverage that cover this. What, what about uh, things that they take to their dorm room? Yeah, so we, we just had this conversation with somebody locally this week. Um, so... As a homeowner, if you have a homeowner's or renter's policy, you have offsite coverage for your personal property mm. for members of your family. So in the case of a student, they're still considered a household member. So it's a limit, and every company's limit's different, but most of those limits are going to cover, unless you're bringing really expensive stuff to your dorm room, <laughs> yeah. you're going to have it. You're going to have enough coverage uh, for the property on the dorm room. And, and it's still good to have a conversation because you can also add that location for liability, too, mm. from your home. Um, so that, that you have that, ex- so your if your kids get into a situation where they have a liability situation, they're still, your family's still covered too. Yeah. So it's a good to have that conversation and, and just give us a call and talk to us about it. Uh, if they're in an apartment, we always recommend they get a renter's policy, yeah. uh, just to protect, cause that's property that you could damage if somebody else's it's, it's different than dorms cause they've got that figured out but the the apartment complexes and stuff it's mm-hmm. it's important to make sure you if, if they're not living on campus to to get something in place a yeah. lot of times they require it now too do so, they yeah yeah well i know and, and i know these renters insurance policies are extremely affordable absolutely for, 150 yeah. to 200 dollars a year it's yeah. it's it's the smallest expense in college probably yeah, <laughs> right yes <laughs> cheap you you can hardly you buy, might a, bu- buy a book. I was just going to say, the cost. book I might mean, cost $200. Wish. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. And, and don't you love it? Uh, they always, I mean, this, I assume it's still the same way, but even when I was in college, every year they would come out with a new edition. Yeah, right. You know? <laughs> yeah. So can I use the book from last year? No, we have a new edition. Oh, so, so there's one chapter where they changed a couple of words right. and I need the new edition. Yep. But anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, good conversations to have as uh, Absolutely. the kids go back to school. Yep. Um, other things that maybe were on your mind, Nate, that you wanted the to on, The only thing I was thinking of when I came out here, and um, one of the things with all the we've, – we've talked over the months about the changes in insurance and, and kind of where the industry is going and how in flux it is, and you're seeing companies pull out of states and uh, all those types of things. One of the things that can happen to you individually is companies can – non-renew you um and i think those will start happening more in frequency um and a lot of those things will come due to claim frequency or uh large claim claim losses so some things you can do to prevent that and manage that is those claims that are pushing that deductible of yours whatever it is uh if it's just a few hundred dollars over or even maybe a thousand dollars over that deductible really think hard about turning that claim in and really try to understand your insurance should be used for a catastrophic situation, Hmm. Um, at least through whatever market we're in right now. Because the last thing I want you to have happen is you turn in a $1,500 claim on a $1,000 deductible, you you get your $500, you're absolutely entitled to that. But then come policy renewal and the company goes, yeah, that plus this and this, we're done. And then you go to the market to try to find a, a company, and they're going to see three losses or two losses, and and they're going to go, yeah, we, we're not in the market for you right no, now. We don't want to touch you. Yeah, and so then you're in a real bad situation because you're trying to find somebody, and then you're going to have to overpay for the insurance probably just to find somebody to do it with less coverage. So do a little bit of self-management about how you, how you manage your claims a little mm-hmm. bit. Uh, take real long thought and see if there's a way you can maybe fix it yourself. Um, is it really that necessary? I I hate to say that because your insurance is there to, to, to pay for those things. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, you know, our job as agents is to, to advise. And I think the advice that, that I believe should be given at this point is to just 
take her easy on the small claim stuff because it could really that's the, where the advice comes in. It could buy you long term um, for the next two or three years uh, with higher premiums or lack of coverage or whatever it may be, and you don't want that. So yeah. uh, that's that, that's one of those things that's hard to say because the coverage is there, and mm-hmm. you you, sh- you should get it because you're paying those premiums. Um, but it could bite you long term, and 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 I want I, I want to look out for you long term, and so that's what we're we're advising folks to be real careful about. Mm about that stuff whether it's car or home or whatever it may be yeah well there you go folks what you just heard is what you get from a local agent right someone you can talk to so uh anything else no that's that you want to touch on no all right that's it you ready for the fall sports season i i think i'm getting close yeah yeah we're taking the break you know (laughs) two or three weeks here before school starts up my son's been getting up at five every morning to go run for cross country since june i'm i'm looking forward to the fact that he'll get back on a regular school schedule and not waking me up and my wife up at five in the morning but i figured you'd get up and go running with him no no <laughs> no nate says no all right hey g- always good to see you yeah, thanks for coming you. in thanks. nate bell from universal insurance our guest on the get up and go breakfast show this week at geared for sports and broken bow gear up with a new pair of shoes That's right. When you shop with them this week, you'll save 20% off all regular priced footwear and an additional 10% off clearance shoes. Be gearing up for the fall season. If you don't see something you're looking for, talk to Scott. He'll work to find it for you. 20% off all regular priced footwear and an additional 10% off clearance shoes. This week at Geared for Sports in Broken Bow, west side of the square. Don't let falling behind on your spraying affect your yield. Now is the time to book fungicide and insecticide applications on corn and soybeans with Aero Aviation. Not only can you fight disease, but you can improve plant health at the same time, increasing yields. Easily control insects like grasshoppers, rootworms, beetles, and western bean gutworms with the help of Aero Aviation. Call Casey, Melissa, or Kim with Aero Aviation at 308-872-5113 to talk about your options. Join us all at Bruning Bank in supporting the area youth as they showcase their talent and hard work during the Custer County Fair in Broken Bow. Bruning Bank is a proud supporter of our youth and their agricultural endeavors. We wish all exhibitors the best of luck in their events. We look forward to seeing where your future takes you as leaders, innovators, and difference makers. We are here for you every step of the way. Bruning Bank. Build. Grow. Thrive. Member FDIC. 837 the time. Good to have you with us uh, on this Thursday morning here on the Get Up and Go Breakfast Show, and we welcome in our good friend Ryan Anderson with the Garden Center, who joins us now here in the studio. Ryan, good to see you. How you been? Oh, not too bad. Well, uh, I remember a while back it was all about planting and getting this in the ground and everything. Now uh, we're we're kind of to harvest time, right? <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, it seems crazy that August third already, and yeah. the fair is about to wrap up and. Or summer go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, how about some of these timely rains oh, during the summer? That's been great. I don't know. It, you, you know, you get a few hot days and get some brown patches in the yard and uh, where sprinklers don't hit or whatever and get a rain and they come right back. And yeah. That's yeah, been been super. I'm sure the pastures have liked it too. So Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what have you been hearing from your customers as we've kind of went through the summertime and uh, the garden season? Uh, uh, have the reports been good? Have there been some things that have kind of been attacking the garden that uh, we're trying to fight against yet? Or what have you been hearing? Yeah, uh, I mean, overall, I think it's been a fairly good growing season. Um, uh, of course, I mean, the cooler temperatures have been nice. Um seen quite a bit of blossom end rot in tomatoes mm. um even here lately um so which blossom end rot is a calcium deficiency um we have a spray called yield booster calcium spray is spray the top of the plant down uh you know the foliage and whatnot and uh that kind of fixes the problem uh for the it, it's a quick remedy, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, moving ahead into the next season, um, you can use products like calcium nitrates. Um, our Jack's Classic tomato feed has calcium in it, um, which is a 
you can use it daily or, or weekly on that. It's a water soluble um, fertilizer for that. But um, the yield booster spray, spray the you know spray the top of the plant down and and uh, that usually gets that taken care of right away. Um, I don't know if you remember we had a lot of moths early this year oh yes i yes moths and millers i remember walking into the house one time like where are these things coming from <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i mean that that's created those they you know they lay eggs on the bottom side of mm. of some of the leaves and in, in in certain plants and so we've seen a little bit of that too um and for those for for most of those we use the um, garden pet and livestock dust mm -hmm. and uh, spray on that so um, but all in all pretty good growing season I think and um, well the other thing is some blight creeping up on tomatoes of course yeah. so uh, we've been dealing with that too uh, use a copper fungicide on that so um, but yeah it kind of kind of some of the normal stuff but yeah but some of the stuff we've been dealing with this year. So yeah. hopefully, you know, I think people are, you know, starting to get those tomatoes for BLTs and mm -hmm. salsas and uh, that kind of stuff. So green bean harvest and whatnot. So uh, th there's just nothing better than something fresh out of the garden. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. Yeah. And it's always... I don't know. I always enjoy a good BLT. So yes, me, me too. For me, it, it's it's the green beans. Yeah. Uh, the the green beans out of the garden. Throw some bacon in there. Oh my goodness. Yep. That's about as good as it gets. <laughs> um, let's see. I was uh, going to ask you to talk about um, house plants, if okay. if you would. I think you have you have a really nice variety of house plants that would work in a lot of different areas. Can you talk about what you have in stock on that? Yeah, um, last last week we just got restocked on those. Um, we have a table set up where we have some of our rare, unusual, or rare and unusual house plants. Um, um, there's, you know, house plants really kind of exploded in 2020 when everybody was home and, mm. and whatnot. I mean they were they were around of course before that too but mm -hmm. um so a lot of people like to collect you know different different things and uh it seems like a variegated leaf meaning you know if it's say like a, a split leaf philodendron is basically a green leaf has some uh holes in it and stuff um Say for instance, like a Thai constellation monstera, is has variegation in the leaf, has mm -hmm. white white specks and and stuff. Um, I have one in the store. It's it's mine personally. Those are yeah. Those are kind of pricey. Uh huh. But um, you know, we we've started to see the price come down on some of that stuff. Um, so on on this table, uh, you'll find some some more rare or unusual plants that you don't really. Uh, you might see online once in a while, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, they're in the store. You can come in and look at them. You can get, you know, the one with the variegation you like or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so um, I think one is uh, White Knight Philodendron. Uh, we've had some Pink Princess Philodendron, Silver, silver Sword. Um, there's also... Um, there's there's a lot in the philodendron family that has uh, the variegation on leaves and stuff. There's also some alocasias and uh, some other things like that on there. But kind of you know if you're a plant collector like that sort of thing, um, stop in and, and look at those. Uh, we have a lot of African violets right now in different colors. Uh, we also have the specialized pots or the pottery for the the African violets because you don't like to water get the crown wet on those mm. so you water them from below and these pots hold the water and then it soaks through the inner liner mm. and uh keep them watered that way so um but and then you know we have a a pretty good selection of more uh, common 
you know, house plants, just like, you know, your marble queen philodendron or um, ZZ plants, snake plants, mother-in-law's tongue, um, and some different... I love the names of these plants. Those are awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. So, whale fin. Yeah. uh, Yeah. So... Um, but yeah, we have we have a pretty good selection right now, and um, we've got we got pottery on hand to put it in, and mm. uh, we do a lot of um, repotting stuff for people. You know, it's kind of good for a house plant to get some uh, new potting soil, maybe once every year, every two years or so, and kind of rejuvenate that. So uh, we do a lot of that for people. Uh, we also have those products available year round so mm-hmm. but, yeah that's kind of that for the house plants yeah uh, i think maybe right along with this uh, uh i know we've touched on this occasionally in some of our past visits but i know that uh when someone passes uh mm-hmm. sometimes uh people like to get a plant yep. a house plant for uh the uh, folks going through that loss and you you Obviously, you've just described some of them, but some of the plants that you have would uh, fit that uh, idea real well. Yes, so we do that. So you can call in or or stop in either one, and we can we can get those to the service for people. And you know, yeah, we do that. Yeah, um, I've asked you a couple of questions. Was there something specific uh, that was on your mind, Ryan, when you came in today that you wanted to make sure people knew about? Um, if We've got some patio furniture in. Okay. Um, got a load in yesterday. Uh, there's some some of that available. Uh, a lot of a few new pieces uh, coming in on that. We'll be getting more in in a couple weeks. Um, we got a lot coming in because we're going to be set up down at the state fair for that. So mm-hmm. um, if if you're interested in in uh, some patio furniture. Uh, Come try it out. Come look at the different options and uh, all the colors and whatnot. So, well, it's it's durable. Number one, it handles like no matter what the weather conditions are, right? Yep. And uh, and comfortable. And when you put all those things together, that's a pretty good piece of patio furniture. Yeah, yeah. There's no chasing cushions around uh, in the wind. You don't have to go pick your chairs up out of the neighbor's mm-hmm. yard. Um, Hundred um, percent recycled plastic. It's meant to leave out all year round. No splintering. Um, yeah, designed for comfort and yeah. built to last a lifetime. So there you go. Uh, the lawns. Uh, let me ask you about that quick. I know you've kind of had some, uh, you know, like a, a lawn care plan and lawn care products. Where are we at in the lawn situation as we come into August? Oh uh, yeah, so if you know, uh, we're kind of we're kind of waiting for that third, fourth step here in uh, September, uh, with the weed out and fertilizer, kind of setting up your lawn for next spring. If you do have some some yellowing, uh, that sort of thing going on right now, we have a product called Green Maker. It's the second step, but it, you can still apply it now and be okay, okay. on that. So. Uh, we're probably a little bit late for grub control uh, this time of year, but um, yeah, if, if you're, you know, if your lawn's struggling and you need some some help with it, you can come talk to us and we can get you set up and uh, either, you know, get going on a on a program or or just you know kind of a one time fix sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the hours that you're currently working with. Yep, Monday through Friday, ten to five thirty, and then on Saturdays we're open ten to two, so okay. closed on Sundays now. So, right. and uh, later you you said you'll be at the state fair. Yep, we'll be set up in the South Marketplace at the state fair with okay. our patio furniture. So great. Uh, we got mums coming in, I believe, the, maybe the end of next week. So getting ready to roll on the fall season. And, Man, so. fall is around the corner if the mums are coming in, right? Yeah. Uh, we still got a lot of trees and shrubs and okay. uh, some perennials. We'll be getting some new perennials in, you know, some trees and or uh, some shrub stuff perennials in next week as well. So 
kind of be restocking some of that. So, all right. Yeah. Sounds good. Anything else that you wanted to mention? Touch on everything? I think that's kind of it. All right. That was a lot. (laughs) Yes. Well, there's a lot going on at the Garden Center. Uh, Always good to see you, Ryan. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you. All right. Ryan Anderson, the Garden Center, our guest here on the Get Up and Go Breakfast Show. Uh, Looks like Dave, I think, is hooked up at the Custer County Fair, so we're going to take a short 30-second timeout, and then we'll see if Dave is ready to go with our next guest as we continue here on the Get Up and Go Breakfast Show. Did you know more than 80 million Americans depend on AM radio for their news, traffic, weather, sports, and a community connection each month? AM radio is the backbone of the emergency alert system keeping Americans safe in dangerous times. KCNI Pure Country is here to serve you, and we take seriously our commitment to our listeners. We want AM radio to be available for years to come. Text AM to 52886 and tell Congress we need AM radios in our cars. Text AM to 52886. All right, 10 minutes in front of the hour, and we're going to take you live to the Custer County Fairgrounds now. The Custer County Ag Society is our next guest, so we're going to turn things over to David J. Burney. Thank you very much, Brent. Yes, a familiar place here the last few days and for many years for folks out there, a tradition that continues to thrive. And uh, we talked about it during the whole fair about you know, it's all about the kids, all about 4-H, FFA, and, of course, the great entertainment and all the things that come with that. But when it comes down to it, it's all about the kids and their animals and their projects. And tonight is the grand finale uh, with the livestock auction. I have Michelle Nelson with me. And, Michelle, I was thinking on the way uh, in, I know you have a title, but I think we should expand it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I was over, uh, what day was it? Saturday, I think it was, over at the uh, shooting sports, and you were real, real busy there, and, and all of a sudden you started unloading pipe off a trailer, and I'm thinking, <laughs> I didn't know that Michelle had to do that. Yep, kind of a variety, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a little humid and hot that morning, and there you guys were uh, pulling pipe off, and I assume setting up for the Saturday night show. Yes, we were. And I think a lot of people need to know that... Um, Michelle doesn't spend much time in her office. I just dragged her out of it just a moment ago. I'm sure you got some paperwork to do. Yep. But, uh, boy, what a nice fair. What great weather, huh? It has been. It amazes me. It's a little humid, but honestly, the temperatures like we witnessed last week could have been much worse. Oh, yeah. We were 88 for just a little while yesterday. I think most times 86, somewhere in there. Humidity has been a factor (laughs) because we're getting all this great rain. Right. Um, And by the way, that does not deter anything tonight. The rain's never bothered uh, the (laughs) livestock auction because you have the Custer County Farm Bureau show ring. Right. And you can sit in there in comfort. A couple years ago, maybe, your memory's probably better than mine. I think we got a real hard rain Yes. Either right before or during. I think it was right during. Yeah. We kind of had to pause things. Yeah. Because no one could hear. <laughs> it was so, yes, yeah, it was noisy under there, plus a little lightning around. That's the only yep. thing that could slow things down. Right. So you have that uh, tonight. Yep. Um, the Exarman Family Farm Awards at yep. 630, right? Yes. Yeah. And that'll be in the show ring as well. Okay. So you can come out early and take that in. Yeah. Uh, and then the auction. And they change the order up every year as far as, I know they they sell all the champions, the reserve champions of each animal category, and then they go in. I don't know if you know which which category starts this year. I didn't look. Beef starts. Oh, beef starts. Yep. Well, of course, we always start with all of the grand champions, Mm -hmm. and then it starts with beef. And I don't have the order in front of me. But. That's all right. But <laughs> it starts with beef. Last year it did not because you guys rotate right. that. Right. Yeah. I think beef was last last year. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, good job, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, th- I think uh, you and everybody that worked on the fair should be commended. We were uh, talking this morning, you know, because when you're in the media and you do interviews and different things, people... They thank you a lot, which is fantastic. Yep. But the stars of the show are the kids um, yes. and and all of the people who make it happen, and in our case, all the businesses who support us. But I don't think people realize how long 
it takes to put on, because the main three days of the fair, and with the, with the grand finale today, and there's still a few activities today, there too. There are, yep. So you really have four days, Monday through tonight, but, but you go clear back to the fashion show, the shooting sports, and all the things that start early. Yep. The preparation that you guys put in is quite a bit more than anyone would think. It is. It really is. And that's um, the Ag Society Board. Again, they have really stepped up again this year. So if you see somebody, thank them yeah. because they've put in a lot of hard work as well. And they're 4-H parents as well or grandparents. So Yeah, they sure do. Parents parents put in a lot of, a lot of work. <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, one of the things that we talked about early on because it was quite a sight, um, the campers that are here is like a, another whole city. <laughs> And that could not happen if, again, the fair board didn't see their way through the um, planning and financial responsibilities that come with making this electricity available. And everybody's right. pulling an air conditioner in those. Or two. Or two, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. So it's pretty amazing how it's evolved to where there's so many campers here. Yes. Yeah, back here behind the livestock barns, everyone would probably, there's 53 campers back there. Out behind. Out behind. <laughs> so... And, and then, that that's not the whole grounds. That's just back here behind the livestock barns. On the north side of the st the barns, and then you look to the west, and there's campers all the way to the horse barn, practically. Yep. Yeah, so yep. that's taken a lot of uh, monetary requirements. and it has. And, of course, getting the electricians in here and so forth. I know that uh, there's still more demand for it, but that also yep. comes into play for your other events, too, I think. It does. And, you know, there was talk, do we put more campers in or RV hookups mm -hmm. or, you know, is it feasible to do it for only one week of the year? Well, the way some of our events have gotten, I think we could fill them mm -hmm. more than just once a week or for the year. I was wondering maybe if that's uh, you have something here about every weekend or even during mm -hmm. the week during the summer months from spring to fall yeah and i wondered if that wasn't one of the factors that brought people in because they know they can come in and i'm, I'm sure they have to set it up in advance but but they know they can bring that camper in with that air conditioner and the food and the cupboards and so forth that probably makes a difference all all season long i think it does yeah. um i've heard several times that they're <clears throat> us having as many hookups as we do is a plus for mm -hmm. them so all right well uh over a overall assessment of the fair you were in the forefront here you and kent <laughs> and everybody else yeah. uh how do you feel about things going into the auction tonight good yeah good i do feel like it was a good fair yeah um a lot of kids enjoyed the new playground equipment um and that was highly a lot of parents have come up and they're like, thank you guys so much because that has been so nice. I don't have to worry about my kiddo. I know that they're over there. <laughs> right. And not, so. not uh, spending time maybe running down the road. They can run off their energy here with the playground equipment. And yep. we're under the beautiful covered uh, picnic area here sitting mm -hmm. nice and dry. And yep. I noticed a lot of people using that. You had water here. Yep. It's been a great addition. Bathrooms right next to to this facility here so yes it's been yeah. great been yes. great um the uh, the events the bull riding i understand was full uh i was told by mr shada that the bulls were um better performers that <laughs> night than the cowboys were but who wants to get on a bull anyway right right i'm not me <laughs> <laughs> the bull, bull fighting was exciting and those yeah yeah. Uh, teen dance last night. Did that go yep. well? I think so. Good. I did not. I crashed before they got <laughs> home, to be honest. So I don't know if they got rained on or not. That was one of the concerns. Mm -hmm. But I told them they were more than welcome to use the shooting sports building if needed. But Yeah, yeah I don't know what time it started raining. I, I got a feeling that maybe it, it kind of held off long enough for them to for them. <laughs> get their get their steps in last night. Oh, but, good. Uh, uh, I, I'm not. I'm like you. I'm not sure because I didn't stay up very late either. <laughs> I'm a long ways from a teen dance anymore. <laughs> uh, so what's what's next, you guys? When you get together after a fair, I assume you assess mm -hmm. what went well. Maybe talk yep. about maybe some tweaking, some changes, or not. Yep. Um, that comes at your next meeting. It does, which is next Thursday. <laughs> 
Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, get yep. it while you're fresh, you know, fresh in your mind, right? That's true. Very yeah. true. Yeah. Yep. And then that doesn't stop here. You have other activities no. all the way through fall, right? Yes, we do. Yeah, so the next big one is I need to get to work on, uh, we're going to do a tractor pull September oh. 1st. Um, it just kind of, I was like, you know, I want to do something different. And it kind of came together. So, yeah, September 1st, Friday night, we'll have a tractor pull in front of the grandstands. That's fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah, and what a, you know. September should be a little bit cooler. One never knows. Right. But tractor pullers don't care. I mean, they're going to do it anyway. And you, yeah. you have the the uh, beautiful grandstands there. You know, over the years, yeah. that's really, really paid dividends. I, I, as I remember, I think it was built for stock car racing uh, because of the higher wall up front. But it makes for a great view up there, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. And the shade is nice. And you usually get a pretty good breeze through there. Yeah. So. So tractor pull coming up September 1st. Yep. And then, of course, the barns down at the West End are always busy with horse events and roping <laughs> yes. and cutting and all kinds of things. Yeah. Yep. September will be another full month. You know, we'll have the high school rodeo and mid-states finals and That's then right. junk jaunt. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Michelle, yeah. what have you gotten yourself into? <laughs> I ask myself that a lot. <laughs> well, one thing about it, it comes so rapid and steady, it doesn't give you time to, you know, <laughs> sometimes when you just have a couple of major events a year, uh, you look forward to them and you kind of are apprehensive about them at the same time. You don't have yeah. time for that. No, no, it's just full, <laughs> full board ahead. Like, yeah, no time to think. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I see Kent around here helping, and yes. uh, all all the members of the board uh, chipping in, yes. uh, and uh, other volunteers as well. You had a lot yep. of volunteers under the covered arena to to make sure everything runs smoothly. Yes, uh, farm credit services, uh, Mike Evans, Evans Feed. Um, I'm going to yeah. miss somebody, but I mean, you just have people that help announce every year, uh, yep. help with the uh, the paperwork. and Yes, it takes a village to put on fair, and we are very fortunate. I feel like Custer County is full of volunteers and supporters, and, that, and it shows during this week. So, uh, The judge of the, the beef, I really think she's top-notch, Bailey Heinrichs, I think is her name. Yep. And um, she said twice in our interviews that... Um, Custer County Fair is really uh, top of the list for for um, highlighting uh, the beef industry in in Central United States. That's quite a compliment. That is. Yeah. That is. And if you walked through the barns or watched any of the shows, like there is good quality here. That's what so, she said. And she's, yeah. And she's pretty accomplished young lady herself. I, right. <laughs> I, the list of what she's done already makes me feel kind of inadequate. But. <laughs> <laughs> she's, but she's really, really good with the kids, and yes. and uh, you had a new uh, judge this year on the swine side of things, and I think yeah. he he would really explain things very well. Um, yeah, you know, so you had some yeah. good judges. Yes. Yeah. Anything that you wanted to highlight that we haven't <laughs> bumbled over here oh, this morning? I don't think so. Oh. Just you know, this morning is the livestock judging, and then the elite showmanship contest. Right. Um, and then the auction, well, the Farm Family Awards at 6.30, and then the auction at 7. We are, so we were awarded a $5,000 donation from America's Farmers Grow Communities, um, which you have to be nominated, or like people put in your name for that. Brad and Barb Bartok did that for us, and we were lucky enough to receive it. So we will be taking a picture with them tonight to receive that money well, that's great so yeah yeah well, it'll be a great night come out if you can folks it's a great atmosphere the stands will be full uh, there's plenty of room up and down on the south side though um and we'll be video streaming it tonight for the first time we've added added that and we're excited about that we'll still have it on the radio tonight uh, but because of that for the first time for i don't know how many years I will not be here on the grounds tonight because I'll be taking the audio feed from the video and putting it on the radio. So I won't be hunkered down in the office anymore. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, that'll be a change. Yeah, I usually have an argument with Colleen before the <laughs> show starts. I won't have that tonight. Well, darn. <laughs> but anyway, we'll be on the radio tonight on Casey and I and then on the Sandhills Express video stream. And awesome. uh, we're excited about that. And the great platform that was built really works great for 
We Good. appreciate that. Well, we appreciate you guys live streaming all week. It, I know it's been used quite a bit. Yeah, it's been fun. Um, and yesterday uh, when they did the fitting, um, yeah. Jeremy got his mobile camera and got out and did some up close I saw that. things. And it really turned off good. So I imagine we'll see some more of that maybe even tonight. I don't know. Awesome. All right. Exciting. Michelle, Thank you. what is your title? Administrator. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a pretty big umbrella you have there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for what you do and yeah. all of the volunteers who helped out bring another yep. great fair to Custer County. Appreciate yes. it. Yes, thank you. All right, well, send it back to the studio for now. Dave and Michelle, thank you. We appreciate it. 9.05 is the time as we get caught up on some news on the Get Up and Go Breakfast Show. You are listening to the Get Up and Go Breakfast Show. Go, go, go! On KCNI, KPBN, Broken Bow, Nebraska. CBS News Brief. Security is tight outside a federal courthouse in Washington, D.C., where President Trump will answer to new charges of election tampering. CBS's Robert Costa. The former president is expected to enter a not guilty plea and will learn whether he faces any travel restrictions. Mr. Trump's just posted to his Truth Social blaming Democrats and the president for leading the charge against him. A drug manufacturer is recalling its birth control pill because it might not work. CBS's Alexander Tin. The FDA and drug makers say patients Patients taking the recalled Tidemy pill should keep taking the tablets for now, but also contact their doctor immediately for an alternative. Weekly jobless claims are up a touch. Bank rates, Mark Hamrick. Labor Department reports seasonally adjusted new jobless claims came in at 227,000 last week, marking a modest increase of 6,000 for this proxy for layoffs. Government releases its monthly jobs report tomorrow. CBS News Brief. I'm Deborah Rodriguez. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles, here's Eddie Garcia. The Major League Baseball games of note, the Cubs scored 20 runs against the Reds on Tuesday. They scored 16 runs against Cincinnati on Wednesday in a 16-6 victory. But Cincinnati still has a half-game lead on Milwaukee for first in the NL Central. As the Brewers couldn't take advantage, they lost the Nationals 3-2. 12 innings for the Marlins doing a wild one over the Phillies. 9-8 to eight was the final. Diamondbacks lose to the Giants 4-2. to two. So Milwaukee and Miami are tied for the final wild card spot in the National League. Arizona is one game back. Rangers roll over the White Sox 11-1. to one. Texas still holding on to a half-game lead on Houston for first in the AL West. The Astros wrapped up the three-game series sweep over the Guardians with a 3-2 win for Cleveland. They're still two back of Minnesota in the AL Central race. The Twins lost the Cardinals 7-3. to three. Blue Jays beat the Orioles 4-1. to one. Toronto has that final wild card spot in the American League. Rays lose to the Yankees 7-3. Baltimore still a game and a half up on Tampa Bay for first in the AL East. Here's your weatherology forecast. Slight chance for scattered storms today, otherwise a blend of clouds and sun. Daytime highs approaching 84. East winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Scattered thunderstorms again tonight. Lows level off around 65. Cloudy skies expected. Scattered thunderstorms likely tomorrow. High temperatures reach up to 82. Cloudy skies with a few peaks of sun. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm staff meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Still some light moisture in the air as we move into the 9 o'clock hour here at our studios. Temperature at 70 degrees, cloudy skies, winds showing an easterly direction at 5 miles an hour. Barometer 30.07 and the humidity 96%. Measured 30 hundredths of an inch in precipitation at 7 o'clock this morning to bring our monthly total for August at that point up to 32 one hundredths of an inch. High yesterday in Broken Bow hit 88. The low dropped to 71. Our sunset for this evening is set for 8.55. Good to have you with us on the Get Up and Go Breakfast Show. We're going to take a moment and play for you now a special interview that we did recently out at the Custer County Fair, and it's being brought to you by your friends at Mills Hardware. You're listening to Central Nebraska's news source, Casey and I. My name's Dave Burney reporting this time around. This report brought to you by your friends at Mills Hardware. And I have not asked this person's name as yet, so let's find out. Who are we talking to? Heston Swisher. Heston, how are you? Good, and you? Good, good. You're sitting up there looking pretty relaxed. How's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. good. We're both tired. Tired? Both you and the horse are both tired? Yes, sir. (laughs) Well, at least you're admitting it. It is the last day, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sale day is the last day. All right. So talk a little bit about, I don't know, what you like about uh, horses and, and that sort of thing. Oh, I think they're a really good tool to have. They're really nice to have, actually. You'd think they'd be a lot harder to keep around, but 
They're a lot nicer to have around than a four-wheeler would be. You'd, you can go up places where nobody else can, and they bring you peace and kind, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, plus uh, you can trust one another. That's yeah. part of it, I think. Yeah, you can build a relationship pretty good. Yeah. Talk about your horse here. How old is this horse? Uh, this is my horse, Squirrel. She is 10. She's a buckskin mare. Buckskin mare, 10 years old. So would that be in the prime? Would they? I'd say, yeah. Yeah. I'd say prime would be anywhere from 5 to 10, in my opinion. But maybe other, but everybody else has a different opinion. Yeah. All right. So you uh, ride out in the countryside for work and for pleasure then? Yeah, last summer it was more work, but this summer I didn't hardly spend any time on a horse. It was more fair and camp and yeah. rodeos, but other than that, nothing really much. What have you been involved in the fair this year? Just sheep and horses. Sheep that's, and that's all we do. It's probably my last year showing sheep and horses, so. All right. And then, uh, are you going to be a senior this year, or you're... I'm just a sophomore this you're year. You're a sophomore. Okay. Year. So you have some more time left if you want to do it. Yep. Yep. Well, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed 4-H so far, and it's been a pleasure yes, talking to you. It's been a pleasure talking, talking to you, too. Thanks, Aston. Appreciate it. This support brought to you by Mills Hardware in Arnold. Bow Bootery and Broken Bow is closing our doors forever. Every item in the store is on sale and priced to sell. Today, get 20% off the original price of all Western boots, 20% off all Western hats, and 20% off all adult and children's athletic footwear. Also, get 35% off the original price of all Bear Paws outdoor footwear and half off all overshoes. At these prices, everything is moving fast. We're also selling our store fixtures and equipment, including office furniture and equipment, cash counter, and storage shelves. Then, while you're there, register to win one of our 10 fantastic prizes, including a Samsung 65-inch smart TV and 5.3-quart GE kitchen mixer. That's our Bow Bootery store closing sale at 440 South 8th Avenue in Broken Bow. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Take advantage of these deals before we close our doors forever. All right, we're back in the studio now here at uh, KCNI, KBBN Radio. I have enjoyed all the guests coming in to visit with us today. And uh, Stephanie Groffel with the Broken Bow Chamber of Commerce is with us now. Hello. Hello. You get to be in the big chair today. I am in the big chair today. Yeah. Tell you what, I feel... Uh, Feel very special. Feel yes. very honored. Feel feel pressure, too. Pressure. I do. Oh, I mean, the, I don't you know, know, when you when I mean, this is Dave's chair, and it has been for about forty years. It's when true. when you sit in it, there's pressure here. I'm telling <laughs> you, you do a good job. Thank you. So so it'll all be fine. <laughs> all right. Uh, oh my goodness, where do you want to start? Um, how about uh, I know that the the chamber. Um, has her hand in the Custer County Fair Parade. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe let's start there, do a yeah. little recap with all of the fair activities. Uh, uh, helped uh, Dave uh, announce the parade this year, mm -hmm. uh, which was a first for me. Uh, Dave and I have announced the parade, but we've always been at different spots. So it was fun to work with him this year. I thought the parade was great, had a lot of good entries, and uh, uh, it's it's just a tradition that never gets old. Yeah, it was a really, and it was a beautiful day. Yeah, it was, very nice. Considering we have had, this summer has been so mild seasonally, except for all the rain on Thursday, um, yeah. <laughs> all of the time, all summer long. But uh, yeah, the, the weather was perfect. We had great floats. We had so many entries ahead of time, which is always helpful for you guys and for us mm -hmm. so that we have those those write-ups done ahead of time. We can make sure that they're um, easily legible, what not else. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a wonderful day. It was my first time helping with lineup. Oh, really? So I've always, up until this point, I do a lot of the ahead of time registration, pre-registration stuff, and then I shoot it over to Julie Tolin, and, and then I don't really have to do anything the day of the yeah. parade. Um, so I, my husband and I both got to help with lineup, and that was a lot of fun, too. Good. Being able to, to check people in and, and seeing things kind of before it all happened. Yeah. Well, uh, as, as an announcer of the parade, I want to thank you. Because I was told that you were kind of responsible for typing up yeah. a lot of the information prior yeah. to the parade. 
And uh, being able to read typed print <laughs> is a big benefit to the announcer. So bless you. You're and welcome. thank you for I taking got the time to do that. 36 so. of them ahead of time. So I think we ended up well, with you, 40, 40 some, but 36 Well, you had an awfully typed. good share of them that <laughs> yeah. were typed up. So thank you very much for that. Yeah. Uh, the Free Pit Barbecue, I know that a lot of chamber members uh, help hand the barbecue meal out and everything yes. and uh I jamie was anderson does such a good job yeah, getting that, does, that set up and yeah. everything else it was another lovely time we had we did a lot of uh, ticket sales ahead of time for all of the different um concerts and and bullfighting bull riding uh, chamber does that every year and that was that was busy it yeah. was busy but it was it was good good it's good to do all of that uh so now we move forward mm-hmm. things never stop no. Um, it is Thursday. It is Thursday, and it is and it is gently, gently raining, misting something at the moment. But the I moment. think the forecast is calling for some sun. Yes, yet today. Yes, so this afternoon good. should be dry. All right. So um, of course it's raining. It is market day. So market on the square happens today from three to seven. Uh, my vendors start setting up about one o'clock, okay. uh, but they. They usually are all there by three so that you can get uh, lots of different goodies. I think there's three different um, produce vendors right now that are going on. There's potted plants. There's uh, cut flowers. There's um, just loads and loads of stuff. Boutique items, great food. Um, the the kettle corn is mm-hmm. still my favorite all-time favorite i can't help well uh, the apperson family would be right with you i think we it's become a weekly tradition right? to go get our kettle corn oh, during Abraham market on the just, square i don't know so. what he does he he sprinkles just a little magic in there it's, oh it's he does the best. it is phenomenal it's the best. and if you've been able to have like uh debbie d's um breads mm. she's having fresh donuts this week oh nice mm-hmm. yeah yeah and then there'll be kolaches on the square uh, Maureen with Kane USA Beef is going to have kolaches there, and she's got some really good sales going with her beef. Good. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just, we have been really blessed to have a lot of great vendors, and, and they have put up with the with the drizzly weather. <laughs> I th- You know, honestly, it's been great. We've only had one day that had really high temperatures. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, the highest has been about 80, 84 um, as an average, so... Uh, it's just the the rain that we've that we've been fighting yeah. <laughs> most of the time, just different for for Nebraska. Yeah. But. Well, uh, w- we never turn down the rain, especially this time of year. So uh, everything will go good today, and uh, market on the square downtown Broken Bow. Make mm-hmm. sure you go check it out. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, a couple of events that are coming up extremely fast. Yes. And I know that uh, this is maybe you wanted uh, where you wanted to concentrate your time on. Uh, the annual steak fry events mm-hmm. are right around the corner. The lady steak fry is like next week. Yes, right? next Monday. Okay, so if so. if ladies want to attend... I assume they need to get their tickets right now if they haven't. Yeah, yeah, we need to get those reser- we need to get those tickets reserved now. Um, you can stop in. So, Lady Steak Fry is the August seventh. Last year we did it in September, and we butted up against school things happening. Mm. So we really wanted to get these done uh, for the men and women before school starts. Um, August 7th, it's happening. We're doing it at the Broken Bow Country Club. They've been gracious to let us do it. They've got a wonderful facility there. Um, it's cool. We don't have to worry about flies. Mm. They they have the steak knives available for us. Yay! Nobody has to bring their own. Um, but yes, women's tickets are available right now. Um, we will take, we will take orders, reservations, whatever else, um, up until Friday about noon. If you're late and need to get them in, we can probably wiggle you in after that. But we want to make sure that Grocery Cart um, has a good order of how mm-hmm. many steaks we're needing for that. Uh, it's a wonderful New York strip for the women. Um, potatoes and salad and green beans and uh, the cookie farm is doing our cookies. Oh, wow. So, yes. That's worth the price of the ticket right is, there as far as I'm concerned. That is. And then for the women, we're asking them to do a salsa contest. So if they have a great salsa recipe that they want to that they want to bring and have and have judged, they can bring their salsa. I have had one person ask me if it was dancing. 
And oh, and salsa not. dancing. Oh, yeah. wow. No, oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> Is that what you're going to do for the men? That's going to be the contest for Ooh, the men's salsa uh, dancing. Can, they have to dance with each other, though. <laughs> so oh, I, don't, uh, I don't think we'd get that going very I well. Maybe... Maybe later in the night, <laughs> you, might, you, might, you might get some people to do that, but anyway. And they probably would do a good job, probably, you know, yeah. the, the later, and they, they've loosened up a little bit, yeah. limbered up there after, you go. after that. Yeah. And good way to get that steak to process through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, as we digress. Yes. Um, Moving m- right along. Men's is August 14th. Okay. Is theirs. Uh, we are bringing back Louis Stidham's cheesy potatoes. Oh, wonderful. Those, that is a good move. Yes. Yeah. So for all of you men that have asked for it, the cheesy potatoes are being made. You will get that with your ginormous hunk of meat that's on yes. your plate. So it's amazing. Um, Andy Taylor and his crew do a great job of grilling up those steaks for us they get them perfect and it's a really good time um i i ask everybody to to come and be involved all right uh the men's steak fry tickets available it's the 14th so Mm -hmm. you would need to get your ticket at least the friday before yeah yeah we really ask for thursday or friday before to have that so that we have a solid number to give again to give grocery carts so that we know that that andrews had time to cut those steaks and and we have a good uh fresh fresh cut in the right amount yeah well it's uh it's a great social time uh Mm -hmm. it's it's a lot of fun sometimes you you see people at these events that you haven't seen for a mm-hmm. long time, and yeah. that's always good. But uh, there's some networking opportunities through this, too, that people may not be aware of. Yeah, there so. is. We have a lot of new new businesses that have popped up recently that are going to be there, kind of getting their name out, um, letting you know what's available, what they have to offer. So it is a great place to, to network and to meet people and to see if your business can correspond with somebody else's, what you can do to support each other. Um, and yeah, and and it's fun. It's yes, fun just it to be there yeah. to see what the chamber does, to see what the other businesses do, to see what the community needs, um, and to just enjoy each other for the evening. Um, thank you for supplying the steak knives. By the way, you're I, welcome. Uh, uh, the first the the first steak fry I ever attended would have been ninety. I want to say 91. It was my very first summer ever working here. And Dave and Bob took me over to, well, it was at the golf course that mm-hmm. year, too, way back when. And uh, we all sat down, and um, everybody realized none of us, we didn't have a had knife. So, a knife. so Bob, thank goodness, had his uh, big pocket knife, and uh, we just shared it. <laughs> so. Bob, Bob, Bob just kept Bob just kept handing his uh, the Bob's pocket knife just kept going around a circle and we would all use it to oh, cut our steak. I it know worked, what my husband uses but, um, his pocket knife for. Yeah. I can't imagine. No, that is that's just yeah. yucky. <laughs> so uh, so thank you for that for supplying the steak knives. That's I think a, that's a I great think move. I would have I would have just grabbed the steak and and eaten it like a some caveman. guys did. Yeah. I think. No, I I. <laughs> steak knives are provided. All right. You do not have to bring your own. <laughs> That's good news. Uh, so if you want to go to the Ladies Steak Fry, get your tickets now. Yes. Call me today. Call me tomorrow. Um, 872-5691. Stop into the chamber. We love to, to chat. You can meet my my newest employee that we have. Kelly Seidel has, is offering her services. Mm. So she's up front um, to help as well. And yeah. Good. Uh, anything else that you wanted to mention, or have we kind of touched on everything? I am sure there is way more. Uh, luckily, on. I get to be here tomorrow for public affairs, so oh, there you go. so we'll uh, highlight any other activities that are happening in and around Broken Bow and Custer County. But those are, yeah, that's the big one for me. I really want to get that push for steak fries out there. I need to know how many people I'm cooking for. Sure, absolutely, and that's understandable. Yeah. So. Thanks for coming in. Always good to see you. That's good to see you, too. Thanks. Broken Boat Chamber of Commerce, our guest on the Get Up and Go Breakfast Show. Are you paying too much for term life insurance? 
There is a tremendous price war in the term life industry. Rates have dropped dramatically in the past few years. For example, a man, age 45, non-smoker, $1 million of coverage, $75 per month level rate for 10 years. Or a man, age 50, non-smoker, can obtain $500,000 of coverage for a monthly premium of $110, level rate for 20 years. That's right, guaranteed level rate for 20 years. If you're a smoker, we have great rates for you as well. At Term Busters, we specialize in policies of $500,000 thousand dollars and above if you're looking for new or replacement term life insurance call today for a quote at 1-800-886-9755 you're probably paying more than you should call 1-800-886-9755 remember 1-800-886-9755 sample rate quotes based on preferred non-smoker underwriting exam required to qualify that number for term busters is 1-800-886-9755 1-800-886-9755 Back on the Get Up and Go Breakfast Show, we're going to play for you now another one of our special interviews that we were able to do during the Custer County Fair. And this special interview is being brought to you by American Family Insurance. You're listening to KCNI KBBN Radio, Central Nebraska's news source. Up next, another report for you from the Custer County Fair 2023. This report brought to you by American Family Insurance, Justin Thompson, your agent, and Cadence Feldman will be visiting with Haley Rosiski next. And I'm here with Haley Rosiski. Haley, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. So what did you bring today? I brought a Holstein winter cap and a Holstein two-year-old. Very cool. So when you go into the ring, what is the judge looking for with your cows? They're looking for, well, it depends on if you're in showmanship or in the class. Usually if you're just in the class, they're looking for a really dairy animal, really barrel rib, a good set of feet and legs, and just overall a great calf. All right, so uh, is cows all that you brought to the fair, or did you bring anything else? Well, I brought dairy cows, and I brought two beef steers, so. Very cool. What is your favorite part about 4-H? Uh, my favorite part about 4-H is probably meeting the people. I also really enjoy showing. I think. I like showing dairy cattle a little bit more, but that's just because that's how I was raised on a dairy farm and I've been to so many shows. Very cool. So when you come to the fair, do you guys stay here in like a camper or do you guys go home every day? Well, unfortunately we drive all the way home because we still have a farm back home to take care of and it's quite the jaunt over there, so. <laughs> all right, well, thank you. Thank you. This report has been brought to you as a courtesy of American Family Insurance, Justin Thompson. Today's highlight is Team Poncho Votivo Seed Treatment from BASF, the official corn seed treatment of the Field of Dreams movie site. And boy, have they racked up the wins this season. From the very beginning, that defense was locked in. Strike three, you're out. Corn rootworm, nematodes, aphids, they all brought their A game to the world's most famous cornfield, but Team Poncho Votivo still pulled out a win. No doubt about it, this team will finish the season on top. Always read and follow label directions. 927 is the time. Good to have you with us as we roll through uh, this Thursday morning together. We do want to take just a moment and go through the schedule for the Custer County Fair. There are some things that are still happening today. Uh, Dave mentioned some of these earlier, but we'll recap them for you. Uh, brought to you by the Custer County Ag Society. Exhibits being released here this morning until noon. And then at 930 this morning, 4-H and FFA Livestock Judging Contest at 11.30 this morning, the Elite Showmanship Contest. And then later on tonight, it all kind of comes to its conclusion with the Exarban Farm Family Awards and the Custer County Farm Bureau Show Ring at 6.30 tonight. And then the 4-H and FFA Livestock Sale will wrap up the Custer County Fair. That'll be out at the fairgrounds. 7 o'clock is when it is scheduled to start. And we do want to remind you that we'll have radio coverage of a portion of the sale for you tonight on KCNI, 1280 AM and 96.3 FM. And we're also going to do a live video stream as well of the sale. First time that we've been able to do that. And uh, you can access that through SandHillsExpress.com or by going directly to the Sandhills Express Facebook page and Sandhills Express YouTube channel. Want to take just a moment and talk a little bit about Circle V Stitch and Post. 
Velma ready to help you get your creation started today with what she can do with her quality custom embroidery service. Circle V Stitch and Post can help you design the perfect attire or gift with your own personal touch. Maybe you've been invited to a wedding coming up or maybe a baby shower. Uh, they can do some really special things for you, personalizing things like afghans, towels, blankets, and throws. Also, don't forget Velma does carry some other things at Circle V Stitch and Post, carry some Western decor. Visit her store and take a look at the unique items that she has, things like glassware, doilies, placemats, candles, lampshades. Big, give her a call at 872-6173. Do have a job opening that we want to pass your way here this morning. You can find out more by going to the full posting, which is on SandHillsExpress.com. Go to the employment page. But when you go there, you'll see this job posting. Trotter Service in Loop City seeking a working manager for their full service station. Light mechanic skills and knowledge about tires necessary. Would prefer someone with managerial experience and customer service. Position would include a full benefit package including 401k, cafeteria plan, paid health insurance, and PTO. Salary is based on experience. For more information, contact 789-6200. Talk to Jim or Tarina about applying for the position. That's Trotter Service in Loop City looking for a working manager for their full service station. And uh, Steph was uh, in just a moment ago representing the Broken Bow Chamber of Commerce. Don't forget, tickets are available now for the women's and men's steak fry events, the ladies' steak fry coming up on Monday. So if you want to go to that, ladies, you need to get your tickets now. Get them by at least tomorrow. Uh, ladies' steak fry tickets are $30 and available at the Broken Bow Chamber of Commerce. The Ladies' Steak Fry and Salsa Contest will be coming up on Monday, August 7th, beginning at 5.15 at the Broken Bow Golf Club. And then a week later, on August the 14th, it'll be the Men's Steak Fry. Tickets available now at the Broken Bow Chamber of Commerce. Cost for the Men's Steak Fry is $35, and that will be held at the Broken Bow Golf Club beginning at 5.15 on August the 14th. All right, uh, we have one more interview to play for you that we did recently out at the Custer County Fair. So we're going to play that, and then we'll come back and kind of wrap up the show here on KCNI, KBBN Radio. This is Caden Sullivan reporting from the Custer County Fair 2023. This report is brought to you by Mills Hardware in Arnold. I am here with... Cora Russian Trader. All right, and what did you bring today? I brought three goats. Very cool. Do they have names? Yes. Um, Oreo and Bob and King. Those are very nice. So, uh, what made you bring goats today? Well, my sister and my cousin were doing it, and they said it was really fun, and it, it looked fun, and I asked my grandpa if I could do it, and he said sure, so. All right, cool. So, have you already been in the ring? Um, once. And how did you do? I got a purple ribbon. She said I would have got third if there was third. All right, cool. So what's your favorite part about 4-H? Well, it's working on the um, animals um, while you're getting them ready. Very cool. So did you bring anything else other than goats? Um, I did cooking. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. That was brought to you by Mills Hardware in Arnold's. AGI offers market-leading hardware and software technologies for grain bin monitoring. With more than 100 years of expertise in grain storage and handling, AGI's bin monitoring solutions include the successful AGI bin manager line of hardware and the easy-to-use AGI SureTrack software platform. Both the hardware and software provide a seamless grain storage management experience for your operation. Grain bin monitoring through AGI Bin Manager and AGI SureTrack enhances safety by avoiding physical bin entry and providing remote visibility to grain condition, including automated alerts, and provides automated in-bin conditioning capabilities. AGI's market-leading solution, from field to bin, provides protection, improved profits, and peace of mind. Learn more about how your operation can benefit from AGI's bin monitoring solutions. Visit aggrowth.com today. That's aggrowth.com. 
All right, that's going to wrap it up for the breakfast show this morning. We appreciate you folks tuning in. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Don't forget Market on the Square, downtown Broken Bow today. We'll be back with you for a Friday edition of the breakfast show tomorrow. Enjoy your day, and we'll talk to you then.